thank you. I'm delighted to be here and uh, thank you so much for, for inviting me. Um, and uh, I'm just going to give you a overview of some of the work that I'm doing at the moment, looking at engineering education. Um, so on the first slide, um, uh, I in 2018, I conducted a study uh, looking at the global state of the art in engineering education. It was a study published uh, in 2018 by MIT, and it was looking at where engineering education is going. Um, what are the emerging trends? Um, what are the uh, key areas of development? And, and also, what are some of the challenges facing the sector? Um, so that, that study was um, commissioned by MIT because they were uh, embarking on a major change to develop what they called NEAT, the NEAT program, the New Engineering Education Transformation. Um, and in the next slide, there, just very briefly, there were some key themes that were coming out of that study, um, just uh, onto slide number three. So those, uh, those themes were uh, student choice and flexibility, um, uh, multidisciplinary learning, the role and responsibilities of ethics uh, of engineers in society, global outlooks and experiences, experiential open-ended problem solving and the development of skills and mindsets. So really this report set a context for what some of the best uh, engineering programs might look like in the next five or 10 years. Of course, that's founded on the engineering fundamentals, on you know the disciplinary uh, engineering science, but actually some of these themes really playing a much more prominent role in where engineering education is going in the future. Uh, so looking on to the next slide, of course, since 2018, we've had uh, COVID-19 and it's uh, obviously had a huge impact on engineering education and will have a huge impact. Um, and uh, I, I, I started this study actually because so many people in the community had said to me, what is going to happen here? We were moving on a pathway towards student-centered learning, hands-on learning, experiential, team-based, collaborative learning. How does that work online? Uh, are we going to dilute some of these really exciting things that have been happening in engineering education? Because suddenly everybody's faced with Zoom and you know a, a very, very different way of teaching and learning. Are there new opportunities? Are there new ways of understanding how we deliver some of these more innovative uh, approaches to engineering education using uh, educational technology, using online learning? Are there new ways for students to connect? Uh, and is this fundamentally going to change uh, engineering education in the future? So this study, which we've called CEDA, is looking at this question, what is the impact of COVID-19 on engineering education? We launched in June 2020. It will complete in January, so just in a, a next month, actually, um, with a view to publish in March. So far, I've interviewed over 200 people from 35 countries to really understand what's the experience of emergency teaching and where is engineering education going? Uh, and in the next slide, um, the, 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 there are really two parts to the, to the study. One is a report that will come out, as I said, in March, looking at the experiences of emergency teaching and how this will impact the trajectory of engineering education in the future. There's also a web website, uh, which is cedar.org, and we've already got six case studies of best practice of collaborative uh, student led uh, experiential engineering education delivered during emergency teaching. Uh, so uh, on the next slide, um, just to very briefly uh, talk you through some of the themes that are coming out.